Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and this is my Black Mage controller guide for Shadowbringers. The Black Mage is an incredible job and it should not be ignored. In fact, it's my favorite caster DPS right now, hands down. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Black Mage actually works incredibly well on a controller, but as always with these guides, the goal isn't to change how you play, but it's just to give you some tips, pointers, some thoughts about how you use a controller within the world of Final Fantasy XIV and how I choose to lay out my rotation and my, uh, my job itself. As always, your thoughts, your questions, let me know in the comments below. But before we dive in, I do want to say, if you guys are looking for more Final Fantasy content, I've got a Final Fantasy playlist linked in the description. We got you covered. But if you're looking for even more podcast discussion and news check out ginger gaming radio link again in the top description this is my podcast channel and hopefully you check it out and enjoy what we've got for you over there but with those plugs out of the way let's go ahead and dive into the black mage on the controller and let's have some fun because this class this is just awesome all right, so the Black Mage has a lot working for it, but as always, especially on a DPS, I always recommend using the UI to help lay out various just information for you. You can see over here, I've got a general rotation to feed me that information in case I ever get lost or tripped up. It's important to note that I find that the mistakes that especially new Black Mages make in this game is they get tripped up or locked out of their rotation and then they have a hard time trying to think about where they need to go. Ultimately, my rule is just cast anything at this point. Casting is going to help put out damage for you until you can kind of get that. That's going to take some practice because that's something I still have to practice on. Sometimes I can get flustered when playing as a black mage and that's where I'm actually letting the party down because I'm when I'm just flustered and I'm not casting, I'm not putting out damage. Even if it is ice, even if it is blizzard, even if it is whatever, it's still damage that's going out until I can kind of reset and get that expectation. So, Anyway, all that being said, we've got a lot to cover. And like with the controller guides here on the channel, number one questions we get asked is what's this, what are these floating icons in the air? And how do you access the double cross hop bar, which you can see here on the screen. So just briefly, let's go ahead and touch in on that. Under your system, under character configuration, you have a couple options here. First and foremost, under cross hop bar, I've got it set up to always display the W cross hop bar and to return to my cross hop bar after W cross hop bar input. This is that essential right here. So if I do swift cast, boom, right back into that area. Same thing on the right hand side, boom, would be right back here on the right hand side as well. If you're struggling with the W cross hop bar, you can adjust your input timer to find something that's a little bit more comfortable for you. Also here under custom, and we'll cover this uh, using the expanded controls that's holding left trigger and then right trigger. You can give me this and a whole additional cross hop bar, which in this case is two left and then right trigger, and then left trigger. It's going to give me my shared cross hop bar. This is everything that I need. And the reason why this is shared is it's controlled by this. What this means is anything that's not checked is specific to the job. Anything that's checked is across all jobs, no matter what I'm playing. And this is a perfect place for mounts and for limit breaks. So if you can't find a spot for a limit break on your bar, well, you can put it on one spot and have it on all jobs for yourself. So, all right. Lastly, you can see here this top hop bar. This is not for clicking. There's nothing I'm doing with the keyboard and mouse, even though I'm using a keyboard and mouse right now to highlight these skills. Under the HUD, I'm using hop bar three. The reason is, is that it doesn't have skill numbers right here. I want this as clean as possible. With the hop bar three, you got a couple of settings. You can change how it's laid out, but I am using this just to communicate different cooldowns to myself or just drive information into my brain ever so subtly. What you want to do here with the hop bar itself is back under system and character configuration. Under your hop bar settings display, you can see your hide unassigned slots. If I uncheck that, you see these gray floating bars in the air. Same thing here with my, basically my rotation uh, uh, tooltip informer right there. I like to have that off. I like to have that clean. I can also display my hop bar numbers, but I don't want these floating numbers just floating out there in the middle of nowhere. So I turn that off and thus I have the UI setup that I've got. Now, all of that out of the way, we've kind of covered pretty much the basic settings, the 101s there. Let's talk about my layout. I've got Triple Cast, I've got Foul, Xenoglossy, Umbral Soul, and Ley Lines. These are just cooldown communicators to me so that I'm aware that I need to use them. Yes, I do have them listed down here, and some skills you'll see listed in a couple of different places, and that's okay. It's about trying to have that muscle memory and have that comfort level with the job itself. 
Now we're going to go ahead and start here on the left side with the double tap. I've got an ether and you can be any uh, anyone. If you're doing high ends, this is obviously going to be a higher end one. This is great just to help restore some MP to you if you make a mistake or you want to get one extra cast off as well. Adol, this is going to lower the target's intelligence and mine by 10%. This is a great little cross roll ability. It's got a 90 second recast time, so it's not as important. It's not a part of my every rotation, but at every minute and a half. I want to make sure I'm at least putting that on a target. Then I have Enochian, sometimes memed as Eno Chain. I've got Xenoglossy, I've got Lucid Dreaming, and Swiftcast. Now you'll see Xenoglossy here and here. Reason is, is whether I'm on a Blizzard rotation, if I want to pop in Xeno, or if I'm on a Fire rotation, I can still easily access that. Ideally, I'm going to Xeno on the Blizzard side of things, but I just want to make sure that I have easy and quick access to that as a single target 750 potency spell. Then down here, I've got Blizzard, in this case, Freeze This. I'll show you that macro. Basically, it's for any of the controller players, any AoE ground placement ability, you're going to want to macro that. Uh, then you've got Blizzard 3, and then I've got Blizzard 4. So this is kind of my ice rotation. Same thing that you've seen probably in previous Black Mage guides, only, you know, this one's for level 80. Uh, then I've got Thunder 4, Thunder 3, Blizzard 2, and a Sharp Cast. I don't really use Blizzard 2 all that much. However, if I find myself in sync down content, I still want to have access to it. Sharp cast is fantastic ability. 30 seconds. Don't don't uh, skip on this. This can help force an, a free fire three or it can for, uh, force a three a free thunder proc. Can't say that for some reason. So thunder three being my single target thunder and thunder four being my AOE target thunder. These are really great as a part of that overall rotation. Then over here on my right side, I've got fire, fire two, fire three, and fire four, where fire two and freeze, those are acting as my AOE ranged targets, and then these acting as kind of that single fire rotation. Then on this side, I've got triple cast, foul, flare, and despair. Depending on my AOE rotation or single target, I can despair or I can flare, depending if I want to Xeno or if I want to foul for that rotation itself. So all in all, this is a powerhouse of damage. Uh, Enochian, same spot over here. For some reason, if it falls off, if I mess up, I can easily Enochian by just double tapping and then coming back into focus. Same thing here on the left-hand side, Blizzard with Enochian. So you kind of see some synergies there. Up here, I've got Gotta Run. It's a macro. I'll show you guys that here in a second. Transpose, Xenoglossy, Enochain, <laughs> Ley Lines, Between the Lines, uh, mana font and mana ward mana font restoring mp to myself in the case of emergency 180 second cooldown mana ward if you want to help reduce your damage totally recommend doing this it's got a two minute cooldown on it so especially when it comes down to bosses you're going to see bosses a couple times there's going to be unavoidable damage the more you can know about the fight by just experiencing it the more mana wards going to come into benefit and your healers will thank you so the concept of healers adjust especially if you're in your ley lines you know, you should at least say thanks and be able to apply Mana Ward for that, so that way you can at least reduce that damage. Mana Ward does have a long time, so if you can kind of see that, you are going to have this on your person for 20 seconds. So it does help. It doesn't have to be immediate, but you have a good window of opportunity of operation for Mana World itself. Mana World. Mana Word. <laughs> then let's go ahead and finally jump into our uh, Tier 2 section. This is where I have Scathe. This is if I'm needing to be mobile and I don't have triple cast and I want to target these targets, I can move around and cast Scathe. You can also see here I've got Swift Cast, easy access here as well. Then I've got my Thunder 4, but more than that, I've got Umbral Eye. So if I want to go ahead and tap on some Umbral Nist to myself, put on Eno Chain, then I've got Umbral my Umbra Heart here, which is a great ability, allows me to be mobile and fills me up with these wonderful, wonderful little hearts that, uh, <laughs> that keep my fire spells down. This is going to be great for transitioning between fights, especially if there's nothing else to do. It's going to keep that up for you much better, much better than Transpose. So keep that in mind. That's where Umbral Soul is going to live. And that is where it lives. All right. All right. So enough of that. <laughs> I love Umbral Soul. Then it's still, I have Foul. I've got a Sleep Macro, sure cast and ley lines here as well. So again, you can have skills placed multiple places. It's not going to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. So all that being said, that's what we kind of have here to build up kind of this AOE rotation. So if I was just going to practice it here, probably uh, just to give you guys an example, I can fire, in this case, go fire three, Eno chain, put on some fire. 
Boom, 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 boom. Bring so much hurt. Then you can see here with my UI, it's counting down. Want to be able to refresh that. Keep it going. Despair. Before I shift into the magical world of ice. Get my hearts. Swift. Thunder. And then I can go back to Fire 3 to start really putting out damage. If you guys haven't seen that, going from Fire 3 and Blizzard 3 has a faster recast time or a faster cast time. So you don't end up spending all that time waiting around and you can see here that that gives me so much more time that i can spend in fire and as i stay in that i can now xeno i can get these extra pops now ideally i would be here in blizzard just as a part of that rotation umbral hearts cast a little thunder drop some xeno boom and just hitting so hard that's why this job is just perfection in my mind and you just keep that going and all in all, I feel like the rotation is much better, much smoother than it has been for the job overall times past. I've been able to sit here and talk to you and maintain this rotation. And I don't think I would have been able to do that in times past. I'm sure I'm not perfect. And I know that some of you might call that out in the comments, but I welcome the critique. I always welcome an opportunity to try and get better at this game for you know every stretch of the imagination i love casters so you don't mind if i'm just in here gushing on the job itself but i did promise to show you guys some macros so let me just go ahead and fire off these last xenos and one foul here just for the sake of it so you guys can see it in action and let's go talk about some macros so what's interesting is when i was looking here at the macros as i was about to jump in i was like yeah okay we can do the the target for ground freeze they actually updated it so you no longer need it so i have removed freeze here in the recording to now you just got to select it it automatically targets the target you don't have to worry about using freeze as a macro so thank goodness thanks for that change they made it earlier i was unaware of it but that's how it goes back to user macros and we're going to focus lastly on what i've got for sleepy this is just to co communicate to others sleepy is your sleep spell this is still crowd control not very much used in the world of final fantasy 14 so you can in this case i'm going to target and cast sleep and then i'm going to tell my party hey i have I have put them to sleep. I'm going to bind them to kind of show you what that looks like in action. If I just use sleep right now, you can see I've put these chains, marked them with a one. And if I was in a party, they would now be sleeping. And thus we would know, hey, don't don't wake this guy up. He's asleep. And that's just pretty much how it does, because crowd control is used so infrequently. I honestly wouldn't even bother casting it. And I hesitate even using it on my bar. But that's it. It looks it looks better. It works better, especially when you're doing some more single player story stuff. But that's going to be how it is. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it interesting and entertaining in some way, educational at the best. But that's going to be it. Yeah, this has been Brian for Ginger Prime. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you have a fantastic day. Check out the podcast. Check out the playlist. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns in the comments below. But I'm going to wrap up the video. Thanks for watching. I love you. And I'll see you soon. Take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.